Hi everybody, um, my name is Caitlin. I am a Teen Services Librarian at the Piscataway Public Library. Um, today we are going to do a paint and sip. So this is a popular activity we do with teens in the library a lot. Um, since we can't be with you in the physical building, I thought I would record a quick video. So today's painting is going to be this sort of sunset mountain painting. Um, so you can feel free to modify this however you want. We're going to go over some of the basics of working with acrylic paints, um, so it should be fun. So the first thing you'll want to do is gather your materials. Um, today we are only using two different types of brushes, and you can get away with just one. So this is the... The, the best brush to have around. If you're any sort of crafter, um, you can make do with this brush. It has that nice kind of like flat edge on the side if you need to do a fine line, but it's also really good for filling big spaces. So this sponge brush is great to have around. Um, I also have a really fine tip brush. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. You can make do without it. Um, the next thing you'll need is a cup of water of course, to clean your brush and then to dry your brush. Today, I just have an old towel, a rag. Um, you can use paper towels or napkins, but I know those are hot items right now. So if you don't wanna use that, be a little eco-friendly, a rag is fine. Um, of course, we also need paint. So I am very lucky, my brother is an art teacher. So there is tons of art supplies in my house all the time. Um, if you do not have access to paint, you can get a little creative. As long as you have white acrylic paint, you could mix in food coloring or any sort of colored dye. Um, Kool-Aid or Jello powder also works. I know it sounds a little strange, but you can use those things to dye your paint. Um, normally in the library when we do a paint and sip, we use paper plates to create our palettes. I do not have any paper plates, so I cut up a cardboard box and that is my palette today. So the colored paints that I will be using are a couple of different shades of blue. This one is like a navy, a nice teal, pink, um, black, yellow, but I really like to mix my own colors. So get creative with it. And if you don't have these colors, but you have others, you can do whatever kind of color scheme you want. So. You will also need a canvas. My canvas is down here. If you don't have a canvas, you can use paper. Um, when you're working with acrylic paints, I would definitely recommend a heavier paper. So if you don't have a canvas, but you do have cardstock or something that's a little bit thicker, that's probably best. Um, you could use regular computer paper or construction paper, but I would try to find something heavier. So we are going to get started. Um, one more quick note before we get started. Make sure you cover whatever surface you are painting on in newspaper or some sort of recycled material to cover your surface. You don't want to get paint anywhere in your house. Uh, so that is a, a good tip, a good thing to do. Uh, before we get started, we're going to talk about some of the basics of working with acrylics. So when you are painting with acrylics, it's kind of like a, a thicker paint and it will be opaque. You can't see through it. Um, so you want to do your background first. If you go in, if you're trying to paint a tree and you go in and you paint your tree first, you're not going to get in all those little lines around the tree. So the first thing we're going to do is paint our background. And as you can see from our sample, this is kind of like mountains on water with the sunset in the back. So we're gonna start down here and do the water first. And that is going to be a nice mixture of all of our blue colors. So let me adjust this so you can see my canvas. There we go. So I'm going to start with the darkest blue, the one right here. If you only have one shade of blue, feel free to mix some black in it to make it darker. I'm gonna start at the bottom here. Cover kind of that bottom layer with my sponge brush. Then I'm going to go to my next darkest blue and do the same thing. Again, if you don't have multiple shades, feel free to mix in white and black to get the shades of that you want, the shades of blue that you want. I 
I also like to kind of overlap the different colors. That makes it like a nice ombre effect. Um, and you can see where the layers are. And then this last teal color is kind of lighter. Do just a little bit of that. So another important thing that I always forget is I always forget to go around the sides of the canvas. So it's hard to show you that without breaking my makeshift easel. My easel today is a box and a ruler. So we have to get creative. But you can see on this painting, I didn't paint over the sides. So that might look kind of weird when it's hanging up on a wall. So you want to be sure that you get on the side of the canvas too. All right, so we are going to paint about one third of the way, this is closer to one fourth, one fourth to one third of the way up your canvas in the blue. You can kind of add in some streaks of your different colors. Perfect. So after you get this done, it will be time to work on our sunset. Um, so this is going to take up the other two thirds or three fourths of your canvas. And that is going to be an ombre of your different orange and pink and red colors. So before I get started painting with the orange and pink and yellow sunset colors, don't forget to clean your brush. If you don't clean your brush, you're going to end up with streaks of all of those blue in your colors um, and your sky might look kind of green, which is okay. If that's what you're going for. If you want to do something more abstract with a different color ombre in the background, you want to make sure you squeeze your brush, grab your towel or paper towel, dry it off really well. I'm still getting lots of blue coming off my brush, so I have to clean it a little bit better. I'm going to squeeze out all that water. I don't know if you can hear it. It's gross. <laughs> okay, much better. So I'm going to go on my canvas from kind of the darker colors to lighter. So up here at the top will be almost all yellow, but down here will be a little bit darker. So I'm going to start with red. I'm going to put the red on my canvas, cover it with a little bit of that purple. Maybe I want to add a squirt of blue actually. So I'm going to take my blue paint, just to kind of give it that softer blend to the colors so it's not so harsh. And don't worry if it looks a little awkward right now, that line where your colors meet, uh, because that is where our mountains will be. So that won't show up quite so harsh when your painting is done. I'm going to switch to my purple paint now. You can see I'm missing the sides again. I always forget the sides of my canvas. Let me go back with a little more red. And don't worry, acrylic paint is really forgiving. So if you paint something and you don't like how the color turns out, you can wait for it to dry and it dries pretty quickly and you can go over it with another color. Um, you can do that if you're painting with a really dark color. So if we put black all over our canvas and then said we didn't like it and wanted to put orange over it, it might not work so well. So you want to start with your lighter colors first. Do you think you might change your mind? 
do a little more purple here. Okay, so I'm going to clean my brush before I go to the pink paint again. Really squeeze out, yeah, I don't want to get it on my palette, but squeeze out all that extra water. So you can see what I'm doing. Grab your pink paint. See my makeshift easel is falling apart. It is a pretty wacky contraption back here, but whatever works. Um, and that's funny, what I was just thinking about is that this pink color is really bright. If I were at the library and if I had all of the paints that we have there, I probably wouldn't choose this color. But because that's what I had at home, that's what I use, and I actually really like how it looks. So you never know, be creative, you might like even more what you're doing. So we're going to add in just a little more pink to hold on to my easel here so it doesn't fall over. Okay, so before I start the yellow, I'm going to clean my brush really, really carefully because I want the yellow to be kind of solid right now, and then I'll go in and add different shading and colors to blend it. So again, really get in there, squeeze out the paint. My towel keeps on falling, of course. Okay, so I'm going to go back in, grab my yellow paint, cover the rest of my canvas. The rest of the canvas is going to be in that yellow color. Make sure you get the tops, the sides. If you notice, because I didn't let the pink totally dry before I went back and did the yellow, it's starting to blend already by itself. See, I'm kind of just blending the yellow down a little bit to make that a smoother line. And then I'm going to grab some of my pink and purple and red. Just kind of do really delicate lines while this yellow paint is still wet. So since the paint is still wet, it will kind of uh, blend easier. There won't be those harsh lines with the different colors. It'll be nice and soft. I mean, think of a sunset when you're doing this. The sunset has all different colors kind of blended together. Nice and bright. A little more pink up here. Okay, okay, so this next part is the most, impart, the most important part of our painting. We are going to take a break. So it's very important at this stage that you make sure your background dries completely before we get to the next step, and that is why this is a paint and sip. So this is a great time to have a snack, take a break, 
Uh, if you're painting with other people in your house, you can go around and look at each other's work, talk about what you want to do next. Um, I'm recording this in the morning, so my sip is some coffee. Uh, so go enjoy a little break and we'll come back when everything is dry. All right, everyone, so we are back. Uh, hopefully your background is dry. This break was also a great chance to change out your water. So if you've not changed out your water, it might be getting kind of dark, kind of murky. This is a great opportunity to do that too. So we are going to paint our mountains. Um, I added some black, white, and a little bit more gold, yellow, to my, my palette, my makeshift palette here. Um, my black paint is really old. I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of like chunky. We're gonna make do, we're gonna work with it. Um, that's okay if that happens to you. Um, just stir it, shake it up really well before you pour it onto your palette and then mix it with your brush. It'll be fine, it'll make do. If it's really, really thick, you can add a couple of drops of water. So I'm going to take my small brush now, my little tiny guy, mix it into my black paint, and just so you can see my canvas a little bit better. And I'm going to start in this corner and just kind of draw mountain shapes. It can be really organic. You don't have to measure anything. You can put as many or as few peaks as you want. Well, we're gonna start that now. And right now we're just outlining them. So don't worry if it's not perfect. Just outlining with your small brush. You can kind of make those squiggly lines so it looks really natural. Start here, this one will be a little taller. And this one will be my final mountain, a little thicker mountain. So this is also a good time to draw your horizon line. So we are going to pick where the mountains start. Um, so I kind of drew my lines going down to here. That's where I'll start my line. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. You can paint over it. it does not have to be a straight line. Things in nature are not straight lines. I'm gonna paint. paint your line here. Okay, so you got the general outline of what your mountains will look like. We're gonna put our small brush right in the water so it washes off nice and easily. And take your big brush, get your big brush in your black paint, and fill the bit. This would be a little tricky. I'm at a weird angle. If you do not have an easel at home, I recommend just putting your painting, your canvas, flat on a table and working that way. Put newspaper down over the table and your canvas on top of the newspaper. That's how I prefer to work. Better for demonstrating. And don't worry if your paint is coming out a little thick. Uh, mine really is because it's old paint, but it will dry flat. Acrylic dries flat even if it looks a little bumpy. So we're filling in the main areas of our mountains with the big brush because it's quicker. It would take forever to do all of this with the small brush, but some of my lines are a little uneven here, so I'll go back with the detail brush and fix those. Really get it covered in there. Make sure you paint the sides, of course. I need a constant reminder of that. Okay, and now that everything is covered, you can pay attention to the direction of your strokes. Um, you, you can create texture depending on which way you stroke your brush. So you want, if you want them a, a nice even texture, everything can go in the same direction. If you want it to be kind of uh, look like cross hatching, um, which is an art term for like the little, little grids almost, you can go all different directions. It's really whatever you prefer. I'm going to make each mountain going in a different direction so you can kind of tell that they're different. It gets a little texture. All right, perfect. So 
I'm going to take this brush, put it right in the water so the paint starts to soak off, and take my detail brush out of the water and dry it off so that it's nice and clean now. And I'm going to go back in my black paint with that to just kind of clean up the lines. Make sure the lines look nice and neat. Not straight, neat. They don't have to be straight, just nice and neat. Maybe I want my peaks to be a little pointier. Like my nice tall peak. Excuse me. Okay. So, you have a couple of options at this point. Um, I You can just leave your mountains like this, just black, plain, a really dark silhouette against a bright sunset. You could also go back with your detailing brush and take a little bit of white paint or a little bit of that gold yellow paint and add some detail. Um, I did that on the sample, and I will show you what that looks like. I think that looks really nice. It kind of brightens the whole thing up. Dark black is really harsh on this painting, so you can wait for your paint to dry, your black paint to dry, before you go in and add those details. You can take another snack break, so pause here if you need another snack, if you need to change your water again, or you can do it while the paint is still a little bit wet. Um, I'm going to do that because I think that makes it easier to kind of blend the colors and especially as we're doing that super fine detail that looks really nice. So I have a little bit of white paint on my brush and I'm just going to go in and really gently add these kind of like soft lines. You don't have to go crazy with it. A little bit on the top of the peaks. A little bit here. This also kind of helps you distinguish like the three different mountains or however many different mountains you have. It really like softens it up. And I'll add just a tiny bit of gold on those highlights too. And the good part of doing this when it's still wet if you put a line and you're like, oh, no, I don't want that there, it's easy to kind of blend it out. Like, look, I didn't like where that gold one was. Blended it out. It's gone. It's like it never happens. But if you do that while your painting is dry, you can, of course, go in and add more black. Black will cover anything up, any mistakes on your acrylic canvas. extra color. Awesome. So, let me take this off the canvas, off the easel. So here you go, here is my mountain sunset painting. There are a few more things that you could add to your painting. So you could go through and add kind of a shadow in your water, a reflection of the mountains. And you would do that by getting your brush really wet, going into the black paint, and I would use the detail brush for this. Use either your detail brush or one of those thin edges on your sponge brush and just kind of add some some black shadows in your water where the mountains are. That looks really nice. Um, I know that the teen's favorite thing to do is to put paint on your brush and then kind of like splatter it. So you could put your um, brush in the gold paint or make like a gold and white kind of wash. Um, even the pink, you could really use any color and you could splatter on your canvas to make stars or just colorful, colorful splashes. Um, I tried to do that on my sample and it looked terrible, so I am not going to do that on mine. I don't have those same skills that all of you have with that. The most important thing when you're done adding whatever you want to add to your painting is to sign it. So put your small brush back in your black paint. You can also use a Sharpie for this part. 
and just put my initials in the corner so everyone knows it's mine. So that is your mountain sunset painting. If you have other ideas for something you would like to paint that you would like to see a video from us for, uh, let us know. Reach out, comment, send us an email, send us a chat. Um, thanks for watching.